good afternoon and a very warm welcome to all of you the hall is fully packed so i think we should have a huge round of applause for ourselves the so scientists say that human brain starts working as soon as you know the person is born and continues to work until you speak in the public so i'm a bit nervous of course but uh, we are here to listen to the fireside chat with the fire brand leader sharad chandra industry veteran and who does not know who does not need any introduction uh, our topic today is combining the words of connected screen and doh sharad the oh industry you know has been uh, ideating and reinventing itself you know for a very long time and it has undergone you know major transformation as well and doh particularly is getting lot of attention you know because i think it 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 uh, uh, it combines the perks of digital marketing uh, in the real world impact right uh, so we would like to understand from you uh, how much progress doh has made over the last decade oh well so that's a um, tough question but uh, thanks to i think uh, leticia uh, rajiv and uh, ajay a little while earlier many of the facets of digital oh and how what progress it's made have been uh, wonderfully let's say uh, amplified so the first point is is there been movement tremendous movement is it all in the right direction ajay has cautioned us saying listen you have kind of made lots of right steps uh, but not necessarily enough or enough in the right direction so the well he's been very uh, where's ajay i think he stepped out he's been fairly uh, school masterish and harsh in the assessment of uh, digital oh saying we are at point 1 or point 2 on a scale of 10 i'd like to believe i think for a young industry which has always been on the fringes of marketing uh, investments uh, so to speak i think the industry has done fairly well for itself uh, certainly not 8 out of 10 but certainly not point 1 out of 10 so i'd probably say it's more close to 3 or 4 out of 10 so that's the kind of progress uh, digital oh has made we are of course uh, extremely or i would be very nervous or anxious about uh, the lack of clearly articulated uh, norms standards and practices for digital oh is um, leapfrogging as we can call it uh, into the next uh, level and i think that is where a lot of work is uh, to be done yeah fantastic and uh, do you think that you know this success has actually uh, helped to gain acceptance from the mainstream digital media industry <coughs> so <coughs> the good part about uh, adding digital to is a prefix to any uh, initiative is it has a lot of early adopters so you will have virtually anyone and everyone wanting to do digital and labeling anything and everything as digital so therefore that that part of it is solved saying that will people want to do digital yes will it be the right kind of digital most likely not will it give the kind of benefits rois that marketers and investors expect even lesser so <laughs> so um, i think that's where the who's who of the uh, indian uh, marketing and oh industry are here uh, people i see numi here i see armenio here all of uh, who have seen i think three or four epochs in oh advertising over the last five decades uh, um, emerge so you know we have the brain trust we have the people who have shown us how you can tame the market how you can leverage the entire uh, let us say tailwinds and also many of us have the bruises uh, of trying to do so to share and uh, therefore i think that's uh, the best cocktail you can get for the way forward yeah true should it how crucial audience buying is you know in the current media landscape uh, especially the idea of singular brand journey you know on multiple devices so I, the simplest answer is if you're not if an investor which is a marketer or a agency or indeed a media owner is not 
speaking the vocabulary of audiences when they are a dinosaur. So they will kind of phase themselves out either on their own volition or the market will phase them out. So the, there is no choice about not speaking or indeed delivering audiences. The challenge comes in in trying to make sure that the audiences that are being delivered are in a way monetizable and in a way for that to happen there should be a clear standards uh, whether it is measurement or numbers on quantifying data and then the quality of that data. And that's where I believe that uh, when I was very heartened to see, uh, I think Lemma earlier on saying that it's the omni-channel uh, partner for getting audiences on the investor's radar. And I think that is the kind of, let us say, insights into the market that makes us uh, feel, okay, here's a good way to go forward. And that's where I see uh, much of the uh, progress happening. So how do you see the future of DOH and connected screens evolving in India? So the, I'd like to believe you don't have a choice but to evolve DOH. Now whether it will evolve in a manner that is federal in nature or national in nature. So in India everything is federal in nature. So each market, each micro market is going to be doing something which hopefully will delight us, but there will be many instances which will simply horrify us. And I think the anxiety of the things that are likely to cause us uh, horror will be far lesser than the, what the cliched word is, the Jugard mindset which is likely to deliver some interesting innovations. I would want to caution us all saying whenever the regulation standards and practice are coming in, we should ensure, we, this is a unique small window we have wherein if we can get the right standards and protocols and uh, let us say uh, measurements in place, it helps capture the value to all legitimate players and it ensures that that entire value that is getting captured and being delivered to the legitimate players, be it the, the media owner who is investing in the digital assets or indeed the media or the uh, infrastructure owner, be it uh, an airport or a metro or a municipality, to extract their fair value for it and not be overly swayed by one-off players who come in and make sure and try and muddy the waters with some very, very uh, difficult, so to speak, value propositions. I think we have that unique op opportunity here and I hope the both the grey hair as well as the uh, steroids around this entire forum will make sure that uh, that kind of uh, capturing and sequestering that value happens. Very crucial point you made. Uh, Sharat, I would also like to know what kind of unique advantages do emerging media platforms offer, you know, uh, like retail, uh, OH and uh, connected TV? Yes and no. Uh, yes, because here, uh, I think uh, Leticia's uh, uh, data showed that, but not just for digital OH, but I think if I'm not uh, mistaken, almost a decade and a half ago, uh, one of the largest, uh, let us say, unsung heroes of uh, retail media was uh, uh, in-store radio. And I think Walmart had a business division itself, which, may, which had in-store white label radio, and I think that was contributing to almost one and a half or two percent of their annual revenue. So, so to, and that was always all about brands in the in Walmart advertising in uh, in in store radio, and so quite naturally to see the evolution of in, whether it's in store radio or in store uh, static uh, posters, now evolving into in store DOH or indeed in and around retail uh, outlets the DOH is uh, I think a very logical revolution and it's. This is, I think, a great example of how a business such as, I think, QBD has been able to uh, bring in systems, processes, and technologies, and capture value, and therefore uh, deliver back 
to all the stakeholders, be it the marketers who are advertising, be it the agencies which are helping with that recommendation, and of course to the um, uh, the shareholder, whoever the media owner, which is the, whichever retail outlet is there, they are getting able to sweat out a lot more value from something that was a, earlier a dead space. That's yeah, that's our space. best wishes to the uh, industry, Absolutely. I guess. And now we, we would like to have a rapid fire round. Uh, why okay. do people call you Shirty? I know. That's a tough one. I haven't found the answer, but if anybody knows it, I'm happy to take Your a Your favorite OH or DOH ad? Favorite? Most favorite ad. Oh, oh favorite OH ad, that's it. Oh, I think the the one that really sticks in my mind has been the uh, British Airways one which was done with uh, in um, in the uh, UK, in London on the kid chasing the air airplane. Uh, I think that's probably the most iconic one. How many remarkable billboards uh, you have seen today while on the way to the auditorium? Oh, okay. I. The good news is I saw quite a few. The bad news is I saw quite a few vacant. So, <laughs> so I'm not sure whether it augurs well or not, but uh, th th uh, I, there is a, a story that is happening and I am hoping that we are uh, all acutely sensitive to it. Have you watched any movie after spotting an OH ad of the film? Watched a movie? Oh, movie. I think more OTT rather than movie. So almost thanks to, I think, uh, uh, Netflix, almost my entire viewing of Netflix uh, is determined by what comes on the uh, billboards and the Oh, that's, that's great. And the most humorous person in the OH industry? Most humorous person in the OH industry? Oh, I think uh, every one of the media owners, uh, their ability to smile through everything that they are facing uh, is, I think, uh, the most humorous set of guys you can think of uh, today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sharad, uh, you know, for giving your time and sharing your valuable views. Thank you.